Welcome. Um, so this question says a four meter long rod is positioned with one end at the origin and the other end at plus four meters on the x-axis. The rod is uniform and has a mass of eight kilograms. And then it says something, it says using the method of calculus as shown in physics class, show the location of its center of mass is at two, plus two meters. Um, so let's visualize this. We have our two-dimensional space, and we're going to talk about, well, actually probably one-dimensional space is all I need. Here's my x-axis, and this is from zero to plus four meters. Um, I can say that it has a certain mass, m, and I can say it has a certain length, l. Let's, let's show l on here. Oops, a daisy. Let me just clean that up. The pen sometimes does stuff like that. And there's my cat at the door. <laughs> so anyway, um, and it says, okay, show that the center of mass is at plus two meters. So, well, we kind of know that, don't we? We know that the center of mass is going to be in the middle of a uniform rod, and if the rod goes from zero to four meters, then the middle will be at plus two meters. So we, we know it's true. So this is an exercise in showing that you know how to show something. And um, it says this weird thing about using the method of calculus to show in physics class. And that's my attempt for my class to make sure that they know the basic science behind it rather than simply knowing how to do an integration. You know, people know how to do integrations. This question is, how do they know which integration to do? So I need a relationship that links these things, and the relationship that comes to mind is that my x center of mass is equal to, for a distributed mass, it would be 1 over the total mass times the integral of r dm. So there's my relationship, and okay, um, I have no idea how to integrate r with respect to dm, and there's the problem. So I need to put my thinking cap on and I need to visualize something. So integration is all about making up slices of things. So this is my slice, and that is literally what my dm is. It's that little bit of mass. And that little bit of mass is caused because they have a certain little uh, width. So I have my little width. Um, uh, OK, I'm going to actually just, just forgive me one second. I'm going to call this x rather than r because I'm working in one dimension. So, oh, so if I could replace my dm with some function of dx, then that would help me tremendously. So what I do is I say, let's use physics. dm. What does dm equal? It's the amount of mass in this slice, and the amount of mass in that slice equals the linear density. of the rod multiplied by the width of my slice, which is dx. So it's my linear density. How many kilograms per meter multiplied by the width of my, my rod? By the, width, the width of my little slice. So I can say, well, dm is equal to the linear density is just the total mass over the total length times dx. Well, that wasn't so bad. So I take that and I introduce it up here. And I say, well, my x center of mass is equal to 1 over m, the integral of x. And rather than dm, I'm going to put down Let's show it in green so that we know it's the same thing. m over l dx. 
m's a constant, it's the mass of the entire rod, and l's a constant, it's the length of the entire rod. So x center of mass is equal to 1 over m. We take our constants outside the integral, so it would be m over l times the integral of x dx. I know how to do this. x center of mass is equal to, let's just keep life simple, you two guys go away. So it's 1 over L. And it's going to be x squared over 2. Now I need some limits. When I look at my diagram, I say to myself, um, well, where is x on this diagram? I've just widely gone on. x is how far I am from the star. That's what I'm, when I say this x, that's what I mean. How far have I gone from the star? And the, thin, the nearest slice would be, well, no meters away. So my nearest slice will be zero. And my farthest slice, my farthest slice will be four meters away. Or let's say L meters away. Let's keep using letters. L meters away. So x center of mass is equal to 1 over L integral. That's going to be, well, it's going to be L squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2. So x center of mass is equal to 1 over L times L squared over 2 which equals well L over 2 half the length. Well we know that's intuitively true and for this example we know because L equals 4 that would be 4 over 2, which equals plus 2 meters. So there's an answer. It's the answer we know is the correct answer. So how did we do it? Well, the first thing is that we visualize. We did our diagram. And we put down what we knew. And then we wrote down our expression. I wrote it in terms of R and later on I chose to describe it in terms of X. That's like the difference between crimson and red. They're, they're two names. The two names for the same thing. <laughs> and um, I realized I got a mathematical problem here. I don't really know how to do this. So then I put my physics hat on and I said, well, hold on, DM, that's the little bit of mass that's inside my slice. So I am, I'm not just learning the abstract calculus. I'm going back and I'm thinking about where that comes from. So I'm thinking about this little slice and that little slice has a mass, dm, but I can represent that dm in terms of things that I prefer, like my dx. So I say, well, hold on, the mass of this slice is equal to the linear density of the rod multiplied by the linear width of the slice. And I can put my letters in, m for the mass and l for the total length and the dx. That's a very important step, that's the physics bit. And then I sub substitute this back in for my dm and then I'm letting the math take care of itself. Now, I'm avoiding or delaying putting in numbers, even though I know some of these numbers. Because if I just, just use letters, then I can see the pattern a bit easier. Now, when I first began, I used to use numbers as quickly as possible. And as I've got more practice, I, I delay putting the numbers in longer. Um, because this shows me, in fact, that it doesn't actually matter what the mass of the rod is. And you kind of know that. It doesn't matter whether the rod is 10 kilograms or 50 kilograms. The center of mass is still going to be at its middle. And that 
becomes apparent because those masses cancel. Um, so I let the, the calculus take care of itself and then I find at the end that the center of mass is at the middle of the rod and then I put my numbers in. Um, it's, a, it's a nice process of stepping through uh, um, the problem. Now, I chose to think of the rod as a one-dimensional object. I could have thought about it as a two-dimensional object, but because it was uniformly tall, um, the effects of the height would have cancelled out. And I could have thought about it as a three-dimensional object, but the uniform height and the uniform depth would have meant that it cancelled itself out. If I thought about it as a three-dimensional object, then I would have had the volume density and the little bit of volume, rather than the linear density and the little bit of length. And so my equation would have been a little bit more complicated down here. But in the end, I would have ended up with the, with the, same, with the same result. dm is equal to m over l dx. So there we have it.